in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed we will stand in the golden sea in the new Jerusalem and our will be no more and we will see that he's stable and cry holy is the land we will worship and adore you evermore we will stand in the golden city Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight's teaching is very, very strategic. This, this for me is a teaching for the body of Christ. We are going to pray. It's actually a prayer meeting. If we are unable to finish today, we'll continue um, wherever the Lord will grant us grace to stop. But I'm sharing something that I believe will challenge our hearts. It's a very ancient truth that most pastors, most church leaders are forgetting. What I'm sharing with you tonight is the secret of preserving the precepts of God in a territory and in a generation. Hallelujah. Open our eyes, O oh God. In Jesus name Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 was a testimony in the heavens that we the redeemed have not only been saved and delivered but that we have been made unto our God kings and priests some versions say a kingdom of priests please listen and it says and we shall reign on the earth we have been made a kingdom of kings and of priests and we shall reign on the earth these two dimensions that the bible reveals is very critical for kingdom advance in any territory 
the revelation of believers as kings and the revelation of their priesthood the revelation of believers as kings and the revelation of their priesthood the bible says we have been made both kings and priests and that the system of our legislature must be such that it is covered within the scope of our kingship and priesthood that if we find ourselves living as kings alone there is a dimension of god and kingdom advance that cannot be effectively dispensed and if we ignore that dimension as kings and focus on our priesthood alone as important as that is we will still rob god from finding expression within a territory very important teaching tonight the first thing i want you to know tonight is that kingdom advancement is territorial it's an information that i do not want us to be take lightly and to be careless over kingdom advancement although the mandate is global god's system of advancement is territorial everybody say kingdom advancement is territorial this for me is already a big deliverance for men of god because sometimes in a bid to take over the world are we together now we do not understand that the system of kingdom advance is the progression of god's purposes across territories are we together from one territory to the other god's idea of globalizing the earth with his presence and ideology is not just jumping from place to place it's not just building branches but being able to establish practically the life the character the nature of the kingdom across a territory so god's rating for a believer for a man of god for a church although your the scope of your mandate may be global but you are rated based on your efficiency across the territory you have been planted per time are we together now that means that if god has planted koinonia in zaria in this time and in this season no matter how effective our teachings the external ministrations are across the nations of the earth that is not going to be the parameter for god's rating primarily he is going to judge us based on the efficiency how we have taken advantage of his presence the intelligence he has supplied alongside the grace that has come by the supply of the spirit how we have been able to establish his purposes across this territory so that's the first point i want you to understand tonight that this king priest dimension the system of legislature is highly territorial we live in a time where there is such appetite for expansion and there's nothing wrong with that we love expanding it's a proof of growth but sometimes we can be carried away in the euphoria of the, the sociological effect of expansion and miss out on territorial impact where we are unable to to live out the fullness of god's expectation as a portion to a territory it was jesus that taught us in matthew chapter 5 from verse 14 to 16 matthew 5 14 to 16 this is what jesus said he was teaching and he said ye are the light of the world now when you read and try to understand what jesus is saying just with head knowledge it can be very deceptive because you see the speakings of god is such that he speaks to men when he's speaking to one man he speaks to the nation in him are you getting the point now i told you that when god speaks to us we must learn the character of god's communication i've taught it here again and again in koinonia that number one when god speaks to you he never speaks as though he's speaking to a man the first thing we need to understand about the speakings of god i'm just digressing to help us understand god never speaks to men as though he's talking to men he speaks to men as though he's talking to himself number one number two god's communications are prophetic the relevance of his words always transcend the individual who is hearing it 
the individual hearing that word is only a representation of all those who will be benefactors of that word god never speaks to a man and then limits the blessing of that word to that individual alone he sent a word to jacob and then that word lighted upon israel god always speaks to nations in men are we learning now so every time god speaks to you sometimes you see that the word is heavy because he's speaking in nations through you and if we do not understand the speakings of god we will carry mandates that were not part of his scope of dealing with us thinking because you had it god can speak to me for instance and say the vision he has given this ministry is replicating the fullness of god's life across the earth and i can walk in a deception believing that it simply means that i will pioneer the move of god in every nation no when god was speaking he was speaking to you in me are we together now it is through that prophecy that mandate comes to pass now if you do not understand this dimension of god's speakings you will end up in error his rating for men is global prophetically but experientially he deals with men territorially learn this the church in pagamos the church in smyrna the church in philadelphia not the church in the world when the spirit of god began to speak in revelations from where we would get some of these things he says right the communication was to the whole world but he broke it down to several churches he would come to this church and commend them i have weighed you i have seen what you have done across that territory a and b and c is what you have done in alignment to my purposes D and E, you are in defiance to my precepts. Here's my advice, correct yourself. Otherwise, because of your disalignment, you and that territory will suffer certain things. His system of marking was territorial. It was never generic. He did not generalize his probing. He went to the churches one by one. The church in Pagamos, the church in Philadelphia, the church in Smyrna, the church in um, you know Ephesus and so on and so forth kingdom advance is territorial it is true that we are the light of the world it is true that we are a city that is set on a hill but then we must understand that this king priest dimension is such that God places men in territories when God wants to promote men he promotes men by supplying three things number one a greater dimension of illumination I'm, I'm touching on many things now the first way god promotes men is by opening them to deeper access understanding the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom the moment the portals of the heavens the portals of revelation are open to you higher and greater than that which you have seen and known then it's a sign of promotion in the spirit number two grace that anointing that agency capacity in the spirit is multiplied unto you and then number three there is an increase and a portioning of greater physical territories not just spirit, spiritual territories alone god lifts men by increasing the span and the influence of their territory are we together Acts chapter 1 verse 8 very popular scripture Jesus was teaching having resurrected he was having his last session with the disciples who would now be apostles before he would leave and then they asked him a question they said will you at this time restore the nation of Israel and he replied by saying it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the father has put in his care then verse 8 says but ye shall receive power listen carefully after that the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be not men of god witnesses witnesses unto me then he begins to apportion territories he would have said you will be witnesses unto me all over the world full stop but now he's teaching them because shortly he would be leaving and they would be the ones to start and he's telling them look 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 the goal is the utmost part of the earth but it will be broken into territories first jerusalem then judea then samaria and then it will expand to the utmost part of the earth 
the first crusade that happened after Christ resurrected the Bible says that something happened on the day of Pentecost now Peter was preaching and when Peter began to preach in chapter 2 of Acts the Bible says that the men were caught to the heart listen carefully and then they said men and brethren what shall we do he said repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise this is the part I'm going to he said for this promise is for you are you saying now for your children oh dear look at this little boy for you for your children for your children's children then he now says as many as are far off even those that the lord will call sometimes you you, you think that the, the bible is too detailed why would god he would have just said this promise is for everyone after all joel already told us he said i shall pour out my spirit on all flesh so why tell us again it is to you your children children's children and to those who are far off as many as the lord will call god's dealings is territorial that means a true believer's assignment is to look at the whole world but to focus on the territory you have been apportioned that is where your ranking that is where your marking that is what authorizes you to be apportioned new spheres both in the spirit and physically our obsession for more our obsession for increase sometimes robs us from the capacity to be faithful write this down our mandate as matured believers is to keep the ordinances of God alive across our apportioned territories our mandate in terms of territorial impact is to be preservers of the ordinances of God to ensure that every territory has a representation of the presence the power the system the glory of God in that territory if we fail to carry this out then we have failed woefully listen again that our mandate as matured believers with respect to kingdom advance is not just to be preachers not just to be prosperous that's important not just to build churches and ministries but that we become custodians and preservers of the ordinances of God within the territory that has been apportioned to us that means there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Zaria listen carefully there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Nigeria there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Jos in Kogi state and those who are mandated to be preservers of those ordinances are believers not just those who advance and win souls but we are like spiritual librarians mandated to make sure that there is a system that preserves the ordinances of God this in my opinion is one of the biggest mistakes of the Western Church they they, they lost a part of their assignment they were obsessed with expansion and they forgot that they were mandated so there was a generation that lost touch with another generation and everybody now is guessing his opinion there is a curriculum of a god that has been apportioned to that territory and it was within the power of all the men of god within that dispensation to walk with the holy spirit and to preserve that truth when a dimension of God apportioned to a territory is lost, they cannot hold certain dimensions of him. The church in Nigeria is a wonderful place. You know that I love the church. I love the body of Christ. But I think that we have to trust God in this time and in this season to our idea of kingdom advance is in many ways faulty 
and we must trust God together as a united body to correct ourselves because there is this obsession for expansion and there's nothing wrong with that but it looks to me like our concept of kingdom advance is establishing our presence is in as many territories as possible whilst there is a dimension of that we are largely missing it because the idea is not just to establish our presence as the man of God or the denomination our idea is to make sure that in every territory there are men who represent portals for kingdom advance that there be no territory that is barren of a true apostolic and prophetic community that represents the individuals who can host God to his expectation within a territory if we fail to do that we have missed a lot if you're understanding me say amen one of my greatest fear in life is finding out that I did not live my life and I did not do ministry to God's expectation it is a very tragic state because the Bible says that our works will be tried with fire are we together now? Yes. Tonight, tonight is, 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 more, is more like a minister's conference. It's a challenge to believers and everybody, but the challenge is, is for those who have been trusted with some measure of spiritual influence over people, groups, territories. We must trust God for understanding on how kingdom advance happens. There is too much guessing in the body of Christ. And everybody believes he is right. But our results are showing that there is inefficiency. There is inefficiency somewhere. There are activities going on. There are programs going on. Conferences going on. And nothing is wrong with those things in themselves. Except that the heart of God's intent is seldom being communicated. And that calls for a very serious review of our approach to kingdom advance. It is God's desire, John chapter um, 15 now, and verse 8, that we bear fruit and that our fruit abides. Meaning your fruit can be lost. Are we together? We have lost several foundational precepts as simple as how to know who is saved and who is not is a serious problem for believers that's a sign that something is wrong with the church that we have lost that ability to be able to see the clarity on who is lost and who is saved the average believer does not know what to do with a new convert is that true the moment you bring a new convert to a believer and say please um, i'm trusting you with the destiny of this brother or this sister you will be shocked to find out that that person may even be a pastor in church that that person may even be a deacon that person may be a worker a leader haven't been around the things of god for many years sitting down under spiritual leaders but not knowing what to do say well i don't know what to do with this person what is step b after giving your life to christ how do ordinary believers become spiritual men do we know well enough to be committed to someone that you can give someone who just got born again and they trust him and say look in three weeks we should be able to see certain things happen in this life listen let me tell you the truth if we do not re-examine this i truly believe that a few years from now the lapse of our being out of touch with these spiritual realities will become clear with all humility and with all love for the body of christ look at the caliber of we pastors and men of god that are handling the pulpit we are largely ignorant people ignorant of the precepts of god 
ignorance of the methodology of God. We just went through a denominations foundation school or a denomination school of ministry or a denominations requirement for ordination. And all of a sudden oil is poured upon you and you are granted access to the souls of hundreds, thousands and millions of people who submit their minds and their spirits to the mentorship of a confused person who only had the privilege to hold a mic. And we keep teaching them and they swallow everything we teach. Hook, line and sinker. The life of the church today is a testament of our inefficiency as men of God. The average believer does not have an understanding of kingdom advance at all. We don't know. We don't care. We are not even interested. What do you do? Do you know? That's why, look at the body of Christ. The gap between extremely anointed people and those who are squallowing around the ground is too wide. What happened? Are you getting what I'm saying? In a whole territory... You may find just two or three people at the upper levels spiritually and then that's all right but the next set of people will be so far apart i have seen churches where in a whole church only maybe two or three of the spiritual leaders are truly anointed or on fire out of a church of maybe 30 pastors 27 of them when they come and hold the mic then you see on the board pastor this apostle this and you say my god who called this guy to ministry what is he saying opinions philosophies cunningly devised fables are we together now and look at the quality of men and women who are being produced it's a disaster that requires a quick rescue many believers do not know god Many believers do not know the Holy Spirit. Many believers do not know the voice of the Holy Spirit. Many believers do not know scripture. Many believers do not even understand the system of God. Many believers go to church, I agree. Many believers take communion, I agree. Many believers join in general church prayer, I agree. But very few believers have risen in spiritual orientation. I'm not talking of men of God. I'm talking of people who are healthy because of an atmosphere that is healthy. The, the kind of threat that the gate of hell is supposed to receive from the church has reduced grossly. Grossly. We see the ease with which darkness looms around territories. As though there are no believers there, but the Bible says you are the light of the world. It didn't say you are the noisemakers. It didn't say you are the discussers. You are the light. You bring illumination. You are a city that is set on a hill. I think it's Philippians chapter 2. When you read from verse 13 to 16, it starts by saying, Do everything without complaining nor arguing. I'm sure I'm right. And then it says that he will be blameless. Um, okay, for God it. That he may be blameless and harmless. The sons of God without rebuke. In the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. What is your mandate? Among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Next verse. It says holding forth. 16. Holding forth the word of life. Holding forth the word of life. Not cunningly devised fables. Not the discussions of men. Are we together? We have lost too many things in the body of Christ. We have lost power. We have lost a voice. No, we, we have to. We have been downgraded to a realm of Scientology and carnality. There must be a drastic upgrade otherwise something will be wrong we will not know the difference between spiritism and christianity or scientology and logic or some kinds of philosophical things are we blessed preservers of the ordinances of god in a territory mandated to make sure every generation tastes the reality 
of the life of God. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence there is life. Everlasting, I will reverence you, Lord. When John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos, John began to explain to us what he saw. And among many other things, John said he had a voice. And when he turned to see that voice, he saw seven lampstands. Listen carefully. And then John said, in the midst of the lampstand, there was one like the Son of Man. And he began to describe various attributes of him. And then it was God himself who began to give John that interpretation. He says that those lampstands represent the church, the ecclesia, God's body. The lampstands that Christ is found in the midst of them. That light that is also a city set on a hill that should never, never be confused. He says it is the church. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. Christianity is not in danger. Listen carefully. Church is not in danger, but the ordinances of the spirit that make men mighty is in danger. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The ordinances, the secrets of God that is apportioned to transform men from ordinary people to make men of power and relevance is in danger. We scarcely understand the secrets of God. The pathway that any believer can follow and become a man of grace, a man of power and relevance. I want to share with you very briefly because I want us to pray. Six ways that the precepts of God can and should be preserved in a territory. seeing fire in the spirit the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing fire like a volcano that's what I'm seeing in the spirit volcano in the spirit like a volcano please can another drummer sit down please let this gentleman come for somebody this man is Still seeing this fire inside outside i'm seeing it it's like a volcano when when you see god doing these kinds of things it's, it's not show it's not show he's bringing witness he's bringing witness to the spirit of man because the word of god must have an agency for performances he's working on people i'm seeing like a volcano rising and exploding then the fire is dropping on people this is what i see in the spirit this is what I see in the spirit. Shabarakata sikata. Shabregade balakota varianda kosi brada. It's making us witnesses. Testaments. Listen, let me tell the truth. There are precepts of the spirit that cannot be lost. We must trust God. We must become true spiritual custodians of these things. Otherwise, a generation is in danger. The death of a man of God should not end the move of God. 
there are many men of God we talk about them they left with the secrets because there were no men to receive they left with the secrets Elisha died till today there are dimensions that would have been seen Gehazi was not positioned to receive God, God sees my heart. How that I desire that we become spiritual. 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 Not just supernatural. Spiritual. You must, you must understand the realm of the spirit. And sustain capacity to interact with that realm. Otherwise you will not do much. I promise you. That you must, you must learn how to walk with God such that you become an envoy of his presence it's not just a call it's not just a unique call to a man it's not just a unique call to a man it is the product of consistently following a pathway there is a pathway that produces that effect it's not an exclusive preserve of particular men there is a path you can follow that leaves the trace of god's presence it's like a perfume so every time you find expression, there is no man born of a woman that comes under the influence of that presence that will not be affected. That's the realm where doubt dies. That's the realm where all kinds of suspicion go away. You, you are not trying to show your anointed. Your presence always introduces a reality. You are showing men that you are standing in an interface between two realms. And for as long as you are there, you open them up to experiences that their current faith level cannot afford them. This is not just talk, talk, talk. All this empty talk, we keep mocking ourselves. The Bible says, for I did not come to you with the excellency of speech. It is not just about oratory. No. This is not grammar. This is the reality. The Bible, Paul calls it the mystery of godliness. That God can be embodied, domiciled in an individual who was born of flesh and blood. But produce an effect that is strangely supernatural. No man is born with the anointing. No man is born with the anointing. No man is born with spiritual power. Men follow pathways. It's an ancient path that has been lost there's too much talk too much grammar too much preaching too much listening to every man of god's message and picking out what will make you stand out on stage it, let me tell you the truth if we do not trust god to touch reality we will keep wasting our time educating ourselves do you know what what the average young preacher does hold on what the average young man not just your young, young believer who loves god does is he finds the tapes of five six seven eight men of god around the world and just puts them together and listens to them and there's nothing wrong with that but the purpose of listening to it is to try to synergize enough revelation to give him capacity to speak well so that he will not be ashamed that's a joke if that's what you think brings power and opens the heavens over a man I is a is a big joke a big joke the realm of the spirit is not an educational classroom it's a place where men are made genuinely there there are there are there are capacities a portion for people on grounds of working with the holy spirit only the holy spirit gives that ranking nobody you can pretend you have it many people pretend they have it but when the door settles down you hear the testimonies Kai, we have lost something serious we must trust God to be trusted with grace to preserve the ordinances of God otherwise some of the young believers coming up the only thing we can give them as a heritage is born again and then they get born again and they don't know what to do and it is this same confused us that have been ordained week in week out everybody is a general overseer 
everybody is a president everybody is an apostle everybody is a prophet everybody is a pastor hilarious ordinations happening left right and center and everybody is just holding the mic and we are as confused as those who are trying to teach I say this out of love for the body but we must return we are losing something we are losing something very powerful we are losing something the ordinances the precepts of the spirit there is a spiritual formula that men are subject to we are losing it in the name of ministry in the name of globalization in the name of making sure we expand no sir the average believer does not even know whether his prayer is answered or not the average believer does. the only thing we have done is that every time we pray in tongues for a long time and dissipate spiritual energy there is a consolation based on that energy so it is based on that pain we go through that we believe it is answered what, what sort of an, an education is that the average believer studies the Bible to ease himself or herself from the guilt the personal guilt that comes from messages every Sunday that you must be spiritual it is not a personal appetite it's not a search if, if that guilt were taken away from us we would throw the Bible in a heartbeat that's why we love using any other thing job or whatever it's only because we are free and everybody knows we are free so we can't say we are not serious so when there is a legitimate crown then we excuse it. How the precepts of God are preserved in a territory. Our sensitivity largely very dull. Largely very dull and everything happens around us and there is no acumen no perception we see and hear things we do not have strength and capacity to interpret so we become victims of anything and anybody who presses a little more than usual we we accept it that that person is being called into the ministry no. number one the first way listen carefully that the purposes of God are both established and preserved in a territory like our territory Zaria here for instance is prayer write it down prayer the first way the purposes of God are established upon a territory and also preserved is prayer warfare and intercession write it down a lost act in the body of Christ genuine warfare and intercession let me tell you something if we ever have a generation that laughs at warfare and intercession that's the generation that will not live to hand over to another I promise you I promise you our our spiritual ignorance is tilting us gradually to downplay the role of spiritual warfare and intercession over setting the atmospheres and the climates of territories to allow that territory host God brothers and sisters it takes prayer it takes genuine warfare and intercession for the heavens to be open over a territory enough for the purposes of God to be established warfare Ezekiel chapter 22 it's a long reading 23 to 31 but the verse of emphasis is verse 30 Ezekiel 22 please help us media Ezekiel chapter 22 and the word of the Lord came unto me saying long reading quickly please Just go to verse 30 because at the, at the way we are going we are going to waste too much time and I sought for a man among them now this was God angry with a territory that's why what I wanted us to read but because of time we'll just look at 30 God was angry with a territory and was about to pour his indignation and his judgment 
and God said that mercy dimension of me was still there but I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land for what for the land not for the church I'm talking about taking over territories preserving the precepts of God over a territory a man that will stand for the land so there are men that can stand for the land not just their churches that because of their presence and the business they do with God certain things can happen to territories they don't even know why it came and how it came but a man stood for a land that I should not destroy it but I found did he say I did not find human beings they were human beings many but I found none that man built in capacity and understanding the ministry of prayer let me tell you this believe me hear me church of the Lord Jesus Christ everywhere here in any nation but more specifically in Zaria if we stop praying in Zaria because of some kind of spiritual laziness you will be shocked the way darkness will prevail over the city are we together the ministry of prayer is one of the foundational tenets that must be preserved in every generation i don't care whether the believer is going to be a man of god or a civil servant or a politician the ministry of prayer must be indoctrinated in every believer he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Not just need driven prayers alone. But we must graduate from realms of just praying, give me tea, give me bread, to taking over lands. That because of your presence in the territory, you subdue the controlling powers. The powers that mold the mindsets of people. The powers that are responsible for prevalent tragedies over a nation. That you come into a city and find accidents anyhow. All kinds of things anyhow. And you realize that you have been made a king and a priest over that territory. And part of the ministry of your priesthood is advocacy. That you go before God and you stand face to face with the controlling powers. That's what men did in the Bible. Abraham stood in for Sodom and Gomorrah. Are we together? Preserved the family of Lot. The wife chose the way she wanted. Joseph stood in. Preserved certain things. Daniel stood in. Preserve. Are you not men who preserve the purposes of God? Their generation. The ministry of warfare and prayer. The ministry of warfare. Ephesians chapter 6. When we read from verse 10 to 19. The Bible tells us. Listen carefully. The Bible tells us that um, we should be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then it says we should put the full armor of God. Are we together? Then it says how that we, we do not war against principalities and powers. But against um, rulers and flesh and blood. But principalities and powers and all of that. It begins to tell us that in every territory these demonic structures exist. Hold on. Let me preach to educated people. You know, sometimes because we have gone to school, because we are rich, small money, small job, we, and sometimes innocently and truthfully, I hear preachers downplay the presence of controlling powers over cities simply because at the present they are doing well. Let me tell you something. Satan is many things. A fool is not one of them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Satan is defeated. Satan is old. Satan is several things. But a fool is not one of them. He has the advantage of age. Time. He has studied mankind. Different species of people have lived upon this earth. He has had an advantage of one-to-one -one experience. Satan has existed before several dispensations. Before Adam's dispensation. That brought us into the sea. Every territory has controlling powers every territory has controlling powers if you see the purposes of God prevailing in that territory brothers and sisters it's not because the controlling powers are not there an agency in the spirit 
a system has been lifted in the heaven that has clamped down the activities of darkness enough to allow the purposes of God find expression that's why I said if we stop praying or if we concentrate on childish immature prayer Lord give me tea tomorrow again oh God I forgot to ask for bread yesterday there is a place where you ask for your needs but notice how Jesus taught us to pray our father who art in heaven we reverence you after reverencing him the next thing is your agenda your kingdom come your kingdom come your kingdom come upon a land upon a territory listen the concept of prayer chains the concept of prayer groups the concept of prayer cells in territories must never end are you hearing what i'm telling you yes now the the, the challenge with many people is that the moment people start praying carnality comes in and they are looking who is the leader among these three people what is the name of this ministry of four of us i don't know who taught us that prayer groups prayer cells prayer chains there should be some structure of leadership but you know we have this mentality and and especially some of us who are coming up are mentoring this wrong thing from some of us men of god the moment people start praying everybody is obsessed about who is the leader who has the protocol to follow him if if we do like that then the devil is going to destroy us in every city and territory in zaria there should be prayer portals that's how the kingdom works I'm a good student of revivals. That's how it should work. In Samaru, there should be units of men and women praying. High in Dogo, there should be people. There has to be representations of the kingdom sending an incense of prayer on a daily basis. That's why I thank God for all the groups scattered around. And notice that's what Satan hates. The moment there are people praying some kinds of agitation must arise from anywhere preserve us of the ordinances of God gone are the days where churches start as prayer groups now churches start as intentional organized platforms for the enjoyment of the man of God are we together that before a man of God starts ministry he has sewn his clothes for one year are we together the offering basket has been made tight envelope is in is, is intact what is it we, we better be careful this joke that we keep joking with ourselves every correct ministry starts as same. it doesn't it? let me tell you most men of God that are being used mightily by God today ask them their intention was never ministry they were men who made themselves available when God called them they went back and cried and said God can you use somebody else God will say you are the person you can choose to say no but I'm not using any other person you are the one I will use but now you see the appetite with which we rush into this thing and the devil doesn't he, he doesn't stop us because there's whether we are in it or outside it's, there's, it makes no difference to him we are still equally ignorant prayer that's how this ministry started prayer every day fire on the altar and I'm not talking of the kind of prayer that is for one hour and you talk for 60 minutes and you say let's let's thank God that's Bible study prayer should be an intense time of engaging in the spirit only to be interrupted shortly to establish a few things strengthen the understandings of the people the fire continues this is the kind of prayer that can host heaven in a territory let me be honest with you many territories have a lot of repentance to do many families have a lot of repentance to do the prayer lives of many people are under attack when the devil finds out that there's no hope of you backsliding in prayer he tells your prayer to become a selfish one so you are praying for hours but you are making minimal minimal spiritual progress I insist prayer chains prayer groups there are many of you here that the burden is in your hand it's not carnality and it is not ministry either 
when you let me teach you something every time you get to a new land before you get accommodation find somewhere where you can pray scan around the back of one tree shout and hear whether it disturbs anybody if that's good, dedicate it as an altar to start with don't go around and say where can i get a hotel and all this rubbish no find a place to pray somebody will join you another person will join you the devil is in trouble once there are up to two people or three that can agree to be praying apostle but what is the name of the ministry it's not it doesn't have a name the ministry is traveling in the spirit until the purposes of god are portioned for that territory so it doesn't matter where you are the assignment is the same if you leave Zaria for a three-week break and you are in Kogi for that three week every demon and devil in Kogi state will feel the fire when you return it doesn't matter someone else is returning there so there's fire everywhere say everywhere but now you find out that some places are as cold as ice whereas some other places are on fire do you know whenever you travel for a ministry to a, to a ministry the purpose is not just to go there to watch a superstar the purpose is to carry like a coal you go and fetch some of it are we together that's why when i see people come from other places i like laying my hands on them it's not just for showmanship so you carry something the goal is to take it back to your territory the same way we do in the physical when they want to teach an organization certain things and they can't sponsor all of them what do they do they pick one man is that true or a few people send them abroad for the training when they return back they teach the people not shine with it not shine with it this is where we are missing it train the people one of the biggest killers in ministry is title and that sense of control over men if we don't repent out of it you know i look at people and there is such an obsession to be the leader okay this group is the name is is, is, is um, salvation power intercessory group and i'm the one i'm the, the, the i'm the chief uh, uh, coordinator of it that means i'm the one who prays more and all these ones are my children you start praying in two months everybody that comes here is your child including people like our mother here that came to all, all this this poor self-esteem that we have transferred into our prayer lives and ministries this title and an obsession for platforms is what is killing the move of god in many territories do you know there are people as students years ago there are people who had different prayer groups when when all of them were finishing they just left they've gone on other places doing great things but most of us you pray for two days and then the next thing you carry a piece of paper who is really the secretary among these five people we need to define it because the other day i didn't tell anybody to leave prayer and this other lady suddenly when did she join this thing before and you see we, we start politicizing it are you not from Adam? Me too, I'm from Adam. That one came, I don't say from Lagos. He said, we don't want to bring all these kind of things. And we kill the move of God with very frivolous, childish things. Another thing that kills prayer is love. No, not love, relationship. Hello? I keep saying it. There are people till today, they have no business loving anybody. Please hear what I'm saying all this thing of coming to the house of god for one month and you're already eyeing every sister every brother you are in love no sir this is not how we train people we train people to look for god first press into god have a testament a a track record then you can love but now everybody is, is just you, you come in two days you are praying people are closing their eyes praying and what you are doing is you are looking out for for who it is to marry i'm not saying god cannot use those platforms in fact god should use them are we together however your heart if the reason why you are in several prayer groups is to find a wife or find a husband you need to re-engineer and renew your mind and repent and ask for forgiveness and concentrate on the major reason why you are there first most people who become mightily used by god never go there to marry they go there to seek god they pray with all their heart and serve and one day while they are praying 
God will tell them, you see this, this, this lady. It's even God that will tell them, my son, look, you have been serving me sincerely. This, this one that you are serving, you need a helper. I said, God, I can continue. God, it's me that I say you need a helper. But now, we are the ones bombarding the gate of heaven. A prayer request full of, oh God, one time marry and God, what have you done for me? You have not done anything. Nobody has been saved as a result. It's a scam to come to the house of God. You are not contributing anything. And the next thing you want to take, and, and usually it's God's best we want to take. Oh, come on, please. Are we blessed? Let me be honest with you, Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's return to the place of seeking God sincerely and passionately. Or coming to the house of God and everybody is checking. What did this one, this prayer group, ah, I like these suits that this one is wearing. I, no, no. Father, your kingdom come in this territory. There is darkness. Lord, we just noticed that 11 people died in nine months. That means there is a spirit passing through that territory. Unhindered. And all of a sudden, one faithful day, that spirit will hear a sound from the earth. Shaka. As it's moving to high in Dogo, someone is taking it from there. Let me tell you how you drive spirits. You make the heavens unconducive. Don't laugh at what I'm telling you. I'm teaching you how this thing works. Because they will always leave where there is fire and settle down. And wait for a backsliding territory. And then return back. This is how many of those we admire today. That's how they were raised. They were never, a Jimmy is here asking, those of you who were there when Koinonia, when he and I started, when you got born again, in two weeks, it will be as if you have spent one year in Christ. Because there was fire everywhere. There still is. But because we're a lot more organized now, it, it's very difficult. When people got, there were people who would get born again, filled with the Holy Spirit from day two, they start prophesying. And even with the prophesying, they are not going anywhere. Because there are still demons to get out of there. As they finish prophesying, they go and humble themselves and sit down and learn. But now someone gets born again. After one month, because of the gift of the Spirit, he prophesies, she prophesies the next thing. They start speaking to people. They speak mistakes into the lives of people. Because they are seen correctly, but the dynamics of interpreting spiritual things is not there. And before you will now learn and grow, you have misled several people. Gift is not maturity. You need to stay with God. No matter how you rush, you must stay. That fire, that fire is the maker of men. Anybody that dodges fire, don't trust him. Don't trust him. You must be refined as of gold. Our desires and appetites must be put genuinely to seek God. Say amen. Prayer. I'm encouraging you. I'm encouraging the church in Zaria. I'm encouraging the church everywhere. There must be prayer units. Most ministries do it. But many ministries, what, what they do is not really prayer unit. It's just maybe home sales, which is wonderful. I, I, I don't have a problem with it. Do you know why we not do it as Koinonia? Because you are an extension of the ministry. The goal is not Joshua Selman in every home. The goal is the kingdom, the power, the glory of God. Your house can become an altar. Your small area can become an altar. Two of you, three of you can begin to pray. It doesn't matter that God started with you. It doesn't need to have a name. The name is prayer. Seven to nine. Five to six in the morning. Nine to ten. Every day or two days in a week or three days in a week. You do this and see what begins to happen. Let me tell you what begins to happen. The moment you pray, there will first be silence. One month, two months, you will start seeing physical agitations. The demons that are resident in men will start reacting. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Your own loved ones will start fighting you. For reasons you cannot explain. And say, look, um, you are becoming proud. And you say, no, no, sir. I'm not becoming. You are becoming proud. The moment they say that, remember spiritual intelligence. You know it's not the individual. You, you respect the body, but go back in the spirit and say, Satan, I'm still there. I know it's you. Jesus looked at Peter and said, Satan, get thee behind you. And you go and continue. 
and then one day let me tell you how God will announce that he has come to that territory a spectacular move of God will happen one day you will see people in a family and they are just sitting down watching football and the power of God breaks out in that house breaks out in the house where they hate the Holy Spirit guess who the first to be filled with the Holy Ghost will be the father himself and you are wondering my father my father yes your father this controversial person who is so scientific yes sir yes sir he's the one God your prayer the Holy Spirit has been eyeing him and on that day we have missed it there are many territories that are cold so the only way people can get some fire is when they rush and converge in particular places the place of convergence is important but the place of convergence should not be a remedy for lack of fire where you are. It should be a place to come and receive a greater famine. Can you make a commitment in one minute that you will become an extension of the fire of God in your territory? Pray. Pray in one minute. Cast away lukewarmness. Some of us, our lives are under attack. We are seeing it, but we do not care. The grace for prayer zero. Every and anybody is distracting your prayer life. I'm busy, I'm busy. A deception by the pit of hell. Lord, in the staff quarters, find a space through me Lord in prison we represent an extension of that altar of prayer hallelujah listen let your prayer be focused on impact not titles impact not titles if you are here roaming around looking for people to start going to your small church lock it down and go and start praying alone yes sir yes sir don't invite anybody let them come and meet you praying and you are praying and God is watching you my beloved son no carpet no canopy no mic no suit no nothing but a genuine desire to seek him and God is saying I I am watching listen all this all this running around am I a prophet or am I apostle is nonsense it is the place of prayer and work. there is no body that starts ministry and start walking with God knowing who he is even if God tells you it will not look like that are you hearing what I'm saying all this I am apostle this just wait and see it will happen you are joking nothing will happen it is in the place of prayer as that fire refines you it starts drawing you to become something and everybody starts saying this is the training of a prophet even you you may mistake yourself for an evangelist because the only thing you did was crusade. But then it's eventually, as it's building you, you know that no, this training is not an evangelist training. Ah, why is this unusual? Ah, there are people who think they are called in, they are, some of you here seated, you are born prophets with the office of a prophet, but you have not seen one vision. Because it's not about the vision. Keep praying. Just continue. Just continue. You will argue with anybody and say, no sir, I'm not a prophet. Me, I, I know I'm a pastor because I'm a good teacher. You will find out that teaching is not even part of it. Just keep praying. The refiner's fire comes through that prayer. When your heart is being purged, are we together now? Flesh is being taken away. One day, you will begin to pray and all of a sudden, you will find out that you will prophesy like Saul from morning till night and step into a strange dimension. Many people.
who are calling themselves many offices take it from me they are wrong they don't know it is only the place of the dealing of the spirit that makes you you say you are a pastor who told you just because someone prophesied he saw in part and he said so he may be right but he may not be it no don't say just because you saw a ring you saw a hand you say i'm a prophet i'm a prophetess i'm an apostle no sir don't flatter yourself let the place of prayer incubate you when you come out fully the name that you are will be shown not just by titles results 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 will show who you are if you're a prophet don't tell us let the results show it show us the eye of the spirit you received in the place of prayer show us the acumen the ability to perceive realities that's what makes a prophet show us the ability to bring things down from the realm of the spirit don't come and talk jargons and waste our time show us the performance that comes based on the word of god show us the throne in heaven that backs that office don't say i'm an apostle show us the throne that backs you show us the keys of the territory that was given to you we go around bragging calling ourselves names flattering ourselves and deceiving people and being deceived ourselves Pray in one minute, Lord, a restoration of the grace for warfare and intercession. Praying over a land. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Restore me back, oh God, to the ordinances of the fathers. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore me back the ordinances that help men to walk with God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I once saw a man of God that I knew years ago. When I shook that man, as soon as I shook him, tears filled my eyes. I was almost asking him, where did your fire go to? What happened to you? What made you cold like this? Who deceived you? What did you start listening to? Where did you go? Which association did you join? Restore my fire. Lift your voice and pray. Cry it from your spirit. Restore my fire. Shakata kata. Leketo satos kabriata. Restore my fire. Restore it, oh God. The destiny of a territory is at stake. The destiny of a territory is at stake. Makato kata kata kata. Sheketekete. This is not the issue of being a man of God. This is not the issue of being in ministry. Preserve us of the ordinances of the Spirit. Daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, without fail.
Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. If you stay on your own, turn your room to a prayer altar. If you are married, turn your house to a prayer altar. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Take it seriously. If you paid for the room, then everybody coming there must pray. If they can't pray, they should leave the room. Don't, don't tolerate nonsense from people to bring any antichrist atmosphere and come and destroy what God is. Your own destiny is at stake. I will not let another person infiltrate my environment. No, sir. If you are paying the bills, you make the rules. Pray. Hallelujah. Listen, there are many pastors that need to repent because many pastors stop praying sins. Ministry is ongoing. I'm in ministry. I know how busy ministry can be. Let me tell you, you need to love God beyond money and beyond members and beyond power to remain prayerful as a man of God. No matter, you can be leading a prayer movement. It's no guarantee that you pray yourself. You can pray whenever you are with the people. It's no guarantee. Many prayer, many men of God that lead prayer groups, I tell you, their own prayer lives is dying. I tell you this as a man of God. Because it is hard work for a man of God to be consistent in prayer and be in ministry. There are ladies that don't pray. Don't pray. Fashion is, is eating us up. I believe in fashion look good. But it's complete nonsense if you don't pray. Can we pray in the spirit just for one minute? Just, just to allow the Holy Spirit to bring this. There are gentlemen that don't pray. We are over conscious of ourselves. No sir. Teach your children to pray. Teach your children to pray. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Prayer. Preserve prayer in every territory. Preserve it in your house. Preserve it in your life. Preserve it everywhere. Don't let it go. No matter who laughs at you, no matter how Western, those of you listening from other nations of the world, restore prayers back to your homes. Restore prayer back to your churches. Whether you are in America, whether you are in London, it doesn't matter where. Restore prayer back. Prayer has equal value everywhere. Whether you are rich or poor, your personal comfort has nothing to do with your prayer life. Number two. How are the ordinances of God advanced and preserved? A regular convergence of believers within that territory. The second way that the ordinances of God are not only transferred but preserved is that there must be a regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained equipped empowered there is no territory that can preserve a spiritual heritage when there is no platform for a regular convergence of believers be it a regular church service be it a midweek service be it different interdenominational programs it doesn't matter 
there has to be a regular convergence there must be a platform where the believers within that territory keep in touch they are trained they are equipped they are empowered then they also receive the blueprint of God's current emphasis is one of the highest advantage of coming together when believers come together the whole territory can hear what God is doing now don't assume that because God moved in a particular way yesterday that's what he's still doing today when a territory dissociates itself from Psalms 133 a convergence for the purpose of being equipped it is for this reason that God anointed some he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of those people within that territory so what what happens here every week is the will of God a convergence of men and women are you seeing why when people begin to say it's not the issue of crowd that there, there is a joke are the people chairs the more the people within a territory that can converge to hear the precepts of God provided the dispensers of that truth are in touch with God is an advantage in the multitude of people is a king's honor the king there is not the man of God the king there is the king of kings in the multitude of people within a territory don't have a territory of five million people and the largest church in that territory is 300 people and you say it doesn't matter what else matters why didn't Jesus die for 12 people and say 12 people receive my salvation then any other person who is interested no he died for the whole world don't get into that mistake of resenting crowds just because there are people or there may be ministries that have crowds and maybe the men of God and the women of God may not be well positioned to supply them the kind of spiritual feeding does not mean that God is against crowd when you reject it it looks like you are being spiritual but that's been carnal anybody that knows God must love people Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 to 47 they continued Acts 2 and they continued look at me who are the day the community of believers within that territory they continued steadfastly consistently unbendingly in the rain in the sunshine convenient or not convenient the sad reality is that most people in the body of Christ have been indoctrinated that only when things become convenient for you there are people who come to church and now I believe in excellence but just a little hit somewhere they said I'm too I mean I'm I'm, I'm too I'm too uh, 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 steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers we are reading down to 47 and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things in common and they sold their possession and their goods and parted them etc etc 46 and they continuing daily not even weekly the church of old they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart verse 47 praising God and having favor with all the people and what did God do who is the person who brings the crowd a man of God please get away from all that mistake of thinking men of God are using oratory you can invite animals by gimmicks not men men are not stupid a crowd of people cannot be a crowd of idiots there are people who are sensible and went to school when you see crowds God brought them 
don't get into that thing of saying people are just gathering just for entertainment no sir no sir there may be one of two exceptions but you don't generalize there are places god is doing mighty things this place is one of them the bible says and the lord added to the church how many daily such as should be saved so the multitudes of people that come are people sent by god to find salvation there must be a regular convergence when satan wants to frustrate the purposes of god in a territory he starts bringing people and policies that try to frustrate the gathering of the brethren are you seeing that now that's why things like a crisis is very bad because among other things it puts fear in people and causes men to not be able to come together and to learn thank god for platforms technology has afforded greater opportunities today most ministries and most groups and platforms have social media presence for all those who are part of what god is doing in that ministry to connect and follow there are all kinds of opportunities for growth number three how is the kingdom advanced in a territory how are the ordinances of god preserved in a territory ready an open display of real miracles signs and wonders beyond the church walls let me tell you how god is institutionalizing a territory an open display not a private quiet secret doubtful manifestation of his power an open display of real genuine miracles signs wonders that are beyond the church wall out of all the miracles jesus performed please write it and look up out of all the miracles jesus performed less than one percent of them was done in the church is that true he was strolling one day and then he saw a dead body they were going out a woman was crying had lost her son had lost her husband and he said what's going on here and he said this woman is about to leave he stopped them there and then and brought the son back to life do you know that when a miracle happens and it is not known it doesn't bring god glory the glory god receives is in the announcing of what he has done i know most times people think it's an announcing of a powerful man of god our mother came here and shared testimony our brother here came and shared testimony of someone who has come back to life do you know what that does to you it strengthens your faith and then when the miracle happens in your presence it is beyond doubt that's why listen listen if you're a man of god here you must trust god for grace for instant performance of the world instant performance it is wonderful to go and come back two weeks with results but there is nothing more convincing than the optical eyes of a doubter watching god in action you saw it before during and after when jesus finished declaring his his um call in luke chapter 4 he told the guy with the withered hand he said for status to prove to you the hand of god is upon me mr man stretch your hand when he stretched his hand that was beyond doubt the highest that can happen to you is you'll be criticized and hated but i assure you god will be glorified an open display why do we need an open display of miracles within territories it creates convictions not just in the heart of church members in the heart of the community many communities do not believe in god because they have not seen him coming in an open display the day god anoints you and you stand and speak over a territory and say god revealed to me that in in five months they are going to tar this road and people laugh at you and say stupid pastor if you want cheap publicity go on air and all of a sudden a rich man comes within that territory and tars that road in five months 
you don't need to tell them God has done it the next time they see you that convicting power the day you now speak and say I saw death in this community they will not laugh at you again they do not take our words serious do you know why bloggers and journalists write everything about men of God because there has not been an open display of the efficacy of the power and the grace of God something that defies principalities and signs and wonders most of this open display is largely done in the south that's why there are hardly our fathers of faith there the, the kind of crowd that comes for their meetings the miracles that happen you will see people sitting on the street selling akara selling pap and watching people rise up from wheelchairs now let me tell you it does not matter how hardened you are if you see a real miracle you must go back and think about it you can choose to argue but the truth still remains the truth what has happened in your family to shut the mouth of those who are doubting those who have laughed at you and said koinonia every time you must trust god for an open display everybody say an open display that one day you step into the parlor and all of a sudden someone that is to go for surgery maybe your loved ones just because you stepped in there while they are busy criticizing a man of god on tv you look and say daddy the lord just said i should tell you that this cancer is gone and he loves their young boys i was with you i was i remember serving god in boys brigade when i was growing up while they are talking all that drama there is instant miracle and he touches his stomach he will first quietly go to the room and lock the door and say no no what is happening and within a short time the lord is glorified let me tell you what they will start calling you uh, where is prophetess pastor evangelist we're about to pray is god saying anything that's a sign that god is working god is working something powerful in this time god is raising mighty men in our days he won't stop he won't stop till his church looks like him he won't stop no he won't stop till my life looks like him acts chapter 19 please quickly acts chapter 19 brothers and sisters we need a restoration of the anointing in the body of Christ this anointing thing is not for showmanship the anointing is a silencer of doubters Charles and Francis Hunter of blessed memory would always say that one miracle is what a thousand words our noise is too much we need a performance of strange and extreme dimensions of the operation of the spirit that stretches people's unbelief until they no longer have a chance to disbelieve God. Acts chapter 19, verse 11. 11. And God wrought what kind of miracles? There are ordinary miracles. They are supernatural in themselves. But they are special miracles by the hands of Joshua Selman. Verse 12. So that from his body, this is a very personal scripture for me. So that from his body were brought to the sick handkerchiefs and aprons today we just use it out of showmanship a man of god just says hey, what did you say is wrong with you sir darkness is all over our house so bring this handkerchief i hold it we spit on it we rub it on our face people carry it back home like a charm one year after that handkerchief arrived home nothing happened it's a sign that there's no power period obed edom and the ark of God was taken to his house in 90 days. How many days? 90 solid days. It's true that I know that some miracles can take time. But something should start working after some time. Are we together? If I lay hands on you to be delivered. And after two weeks you come back. One month. Nothing has happened. That means something is wrong. Not with you. With me. I should go back for a retreat and say lord these hands otherwise a day will come the hands will just look like tissue paper as it's coming on your head you believe that nothing is happening keep these hands anointed oh god keep these hands anointed 
Keep these hands anointed. That's a good prayer to pray for yourself. Keep these hands anointed. May I never stand upon the stage and waste the time of God's people. May I never lay hands on someone or shake someone and touch someone and his life doesn't change. This is not about showmanship. When your hands are empty, you are not in ministry. Let me tell you, you are just, you are just a, no. Abba. Believe what I'm saying. Keep these hands. Preserve it. Preserve your grace. Preserve the mystery of the oil you have put upon his hand. He said, God brought mighty miracles. Give it to us again, please. By the hands of Paul. What is happening through your hands? Nothing. 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 You don't have to be in church. What is happening through your hands? What happens to my destiny if I shake you? You claim that God lives in you. Brothers and sisters, what has happened to your hands? Nothing. Oh, let me agree with you. And we hold people. While we are praying, their eyes are opening. We are the only ones who close our eyes. Because they don't believe in us. They know that that prayer is just nonsense. In Jesus' name, amen. They say, thank you, sir. And they go back and say, sorry, can I see this man of God? Because that's the real person they know who solved their problems. I want you to look at your hands and pray over it in one minute. And say, Lord, put something upon this hand. Put an anointing upon this hand that can represent your purposes. It's not a carnal prayer. I want you to sincerely pray. Shake it like a source of Akapia. Put an anointing upon my hand, so God. There are too many sick people in my environment. Look at the brother that shared his testimony. He used his hand to hold the phone. And with a single call, a dead body came back from the realm of the spirit to the physical. Place an anointing on my hand. Place an anointing on my hand. Hallelujah. He said, and the disease departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. 13. And certain of the vagabond Jews, copycats, exorcists, they took it upon themselves, upon them which had an evil spirit. You know the name of the Lord saying, We adjure you. They thought it's just by by big manism or wearing nice clothes and one day they saw someone who was heavily under the influence of demon spirits are we together now we are reading to verse 20 and then 14 says and there were seven sons of one skiva a Jew and a chief of the priest which did so 15 and the evil spirit answered them that's the side effect of lack of true power it's not that the devil is trying to confess. This is not confession. This is a question. You, are, you, are, you, you stupid man of God. You think everybody is faking it. He called those who are real. Known by the realm of the spirit. Not by members. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? Hi. Who are you? When a demon spirit asks you, who are you? Is that a nice thing? From the realm of the spirit. They are watching you every day. You have one suit. You went for a program. They kept water in front of your table. They did a, a good publicity. And they said, now it's time for the man of God, a man of strange anointing. And you hold the mic. And you are talking jargons and someone there is looking at you. And all of the sudden, the demon spirit with the person heavily possessed just does his hand like that and you collapse on the stage and stand up and say sorry I don't know what happened my mind is ah no there's an army rising up there's an army rising up there's an army progress verse 16 we are reading to 20 and the man in whom the evil spirit was did what 
leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded the consequence of approaching the power of darkness and the gates of hell when you have not proved that your fire is real there are many arrogant people in the body of christ listen to me let me give you a very true secret the power of god is unlimited but its operation in the body of believers depend on many factors which includes their level of spiritual growth you must have the courage to discern what is your level spiritually there are many arrogant people they will do anything you are seeing some level of acute darkness that does not just require being anointed but a comprehension of deep spiritual mysteries to set the people free you just get up by yourself carry a bottle of oil and travel to one state that has 200 years of track record of acute witchcraft i'm 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 in christ and you go there as soon as you get there you start pouring oil around the compound nobody talks to you you just find out that that night as you are sleeping the next day you get up and find yourself in the hospital what happens they say that's how the spirits work they don't talk to people the next thing you just whatever happens to you is their answer listen it's not everything you see that is that is all that there is when you see a man of God moving in the anointing it's only what you can see with your physical eyes you think is happening but there are interplay of spiritual laws a man can lay hands on someone's head and lay hands on his shoulder and you just think that it was just for the anointing to go anywhere when that man if he's spiritual if he explains to you the dynamics of what he has done are we together it's not all about just touching his head and his shoulder or whatever no that's why we must grow but as we grow we must trust god to know certain realities that require a higher level of anointing and insight there are certain levels of spiritual breakthrough that no matter how an individual is anointed one man cannot bring that level of breakthrough it will take the corporate body to bring it we do not know and one man will be trying to pull down something that is bigger than him so we must have that that's just a lesson for us to learn let's read down please quickly Media, don't take it away. Just leave it there so that we we'll hurry up, please. Help us. And this was known to all the community. Are you seeing now? Something unpleasant now is known to all the community. Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear came upon them. And the name of the Lord was magnified. They saw the apostles healing the sick. And I'm sure that they said, what is there? What is their miracles? Anybody can heal. The sons of Sceva went to try it. When the demons beat them, it was an endorsement that this anointing is not common everywhere. And the Bible says that the people glorified God. And then verse 18 says, And many that believed did what as a result? They came and confessed and showed their deeds. 19, we are reading to 20 many of them which also use curious acts that means there were people who were smuggling magic books and using it it was working small by small but when certain men came into that city they got everyone packing out including magicians do you think if that book did not do something for them wouldn't they have thrown it since they saw something superior and powerful and the Bible says they brought their books together and burned them before who? A community. Imagine a popular herbalist in Bromo or somewhere, maybe Zaria City, bringing his magic book here and standing before everybody and say, I was sent to go and kill one koinonia lady. And just because I saw her cat walking, I thought it was all about the reform. When I touched fire, I got a reply and a response that I have never seen for 30 years of herbal practice. This is what happened there. And they counted the price of them and they found it 50,000 pieces of silver. 20 popular scripture. 
so mightily green the word of God. Why? Because of a public display of miracles, signs and wonders. We need the supernatural. We need to cry for the anointing. We need a restoration of authentic spiritual power to back our churches and to back our lives. Man of God, don't preach without power. It's not about saying, there's somebody here. The power of God will throw you. That's not what we are talking about. That, that's not power. We are talking of results. Results. Undeniable results. Like some of you are seated here now. You are coming for the first time. You will not need to tell people you came for koinonia. You will just go back. And all of a sudden, you find out that something has shifted. You open your Bible. A true encounter is not known at the moment of the encounter. It's until the experience leaves. And then the person just finds out that something has happened strangely. Let me give us one more. There are six. But I'll just stop at number four so that we pray. Number one is prayer. Number two is a regular convergence of believers within that territory. Number three, an open display of miracle signs and wonders beyond the church walls. Number four, intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers. The fourth way, the ordinances of God are preserved in a territory is through an intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers. This is a serious one. Let me tell you this. Failure to mentor the younger believers that are rising will produce a generation that will forget God. Not just forget his ordinances, but forget God. I'm watching that and I'm throwing this as a challenge to the body of Christ and even the church in Zaria. Who are the apostolic and the prophetic voices mentoring our young ones in primary school now? Everybody has left them and we're focusing on ministry. Who are the people mentoring those in secondary school? Thank God for FCS. Thank God for um, um, CEM. Thank God for all of these people. But there are some of you here. You need to go back and begin to make sure that young people like Shade's child here, that by the time they are growing, they are not only receiving education alone. There must be an intentional mentorship of younger people. Most people, is the mistake of the American church, they left their children. So you will see a mother who was an old Baptist woman, served God all her life, but you will find out that her child is a tout and a hooligan somewhere who does not love God. We must concentrate. Right now, most people from the ages of 17 downwards, all they are obsessed about is phones, Android devices, PS4. I don't have a problem with it. But their entire obsession, oh, what OS are you using? You hear that? That's all they think about. Oh, I'm using this PS4. There's this. Ah, they need fire. Oh, they need, they are not too young. They need serious fire. I'm not against that. It's the reality that comes with that age range. But we must be able to guide people. That's why I love it when you see our children come here for koinonia. I know that many of you say, ah, are they too young to understand? Ask occultists whether the children are too young to understand. You see a small child tie something like a napkin and do it like this and you turn upside down and fall down. That's the child of a herbalist. And they tell you, ah, that guy is one of the most senior person in this tribe. That small boy you are saying that is my son. Is your son in the physical? In the realm of the spirit is something else. An ancient spirit is seated on that small child. There is no child that is too small to receive spiritual things. They may be too small to articulate it, but their spirit is healthy enough to receive it. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. Second Timothy. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. He said the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others too. A superstar lifestyle is not God's plan. God's plan is not superstar apostle Joshua Selman. 
God's plan is Apostle Joshua Selman committed by grace certain precepts and your assignment is to open up your heart and pour it to people so that they also will do so may God forbid that the day will come in Zaria when the average young man does not know God say amen may God forbid that in Zaria during a church service we will have young people hanging around sagging their jeans and dancing around and toasting themselves instead of praying and crying to the God who can change any man's destiny may God forbid that is not your child that will refuse to know God listen 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 our children must love God and they must love God genuinely somebody is indoctrinating a generation to hate God I want you to beware there is a secret indoctrination of a generation ages 5 to 15 must be preserved those of you here that God is calling you into children ministry receive an anointing for it it's not all about giving children biscuits and sweets let them cram the memory verses that's how we started children now don't know any memory verse again you ask them john 3 16 they are twisting their tongues and talking nonsense teach them don't say it's not useful let them know when we were being raised they taught godly songs now in most schools children cannot have a clean song that does not have explicit contents a little child is singing a song that even as an adult you look at him and say no this should not be there must be restoration of godliness cem may god anoint you more and revive you more please fcs may god anoint you and revive you more individual children ministry groups may god anoint you and revive you more because if you yourself are not revived what will you teach the children bad things bad things that's what our children learn now things that are more than their age and we say it does not matter it matters you have children in your house who are too young to watch certain things don't let them watch it don't let them watch it there are times you need to regulate i'm not i'm not trying to be harsh but there are times you need to regulate all this this a child of seven years watching television from morning till night switching from one music channel to the other hearing things and receiving them in the spirit and authorizing demon spirits to come and destroy them we must preserve godliness say amen, amen. you don't like what i'm saying i don't plan to stop at all we must say it again and again some of you god gave you instructions before you became popular to visit secondary schools and primary schools not with the name of any ministry and bless them but now that you have become apostle joshua selman you have become madam madam whatever businesswoman or whatever you have stopped go back repent and go back we have this mentality that when we are ministering to children it's a sign that we ourselves are children it's the society that makes it so in a bit to show that we are matured we leave the children and say look let's start talking to married men jesus said let the little children come to who come to me he says and do not forbid them for for such is the kingdom of heaven please return back to children ministry in the name of jesus christ when a child looks at you and does like this to you don't smile at the child and rub the head carry the hand and spank it and say no you don't do like this you greet people are we together most of us watch children do all kinds of things a visitor just comes and the child comes and stands in front of him and slaps the visitor and is laughing and you are watching is that good bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child but a rod of correction not discussion you don't have to be hostile on children a little spank with two fingers one two and then tell them what they did that was wrong don't just leave them cry this is what you did mommy does not like it daddy does not like it for that reason one two jesus too does not like it In, include jesus let them learn and know that it's not just you alone preserve us of the ordinances of the kingdom 
there's this song that says, Our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise your name. My generation shall praise your name. My generation shall praise your name. And I made a vow that for as long as I'm alive, my generation must know God. It's a covenant I've entered with myself. There's no going back. There's no discussion. There's no hope of going back. To go back is to die in life and in death. It's a vow and a covenant I've made with myself and everything around my life. It is to serve Him forever and to introduce Him to a generation. God is waking us up. Stop playing games. Don't wait until the day you have a cathedral of 5,000 people. You can start now. Some of you, you are the firstborn. You are the only one who knows God in your house. Your, your firstborn can look at you and say, stupid girl, that's a joke. You need to cast out that demon out of your head and organize a standard Bible study using a koinonia message and tell them, sit down. You are 10 years older than him. He's insulting you that devil out of that head and keep that child disciplined. The day I give birth to a child who insults me, that, that day, I'm not going to concentrate on the child. The spirit that could enter my roof through that child, a child of, maybe it's a child of two, three years, nine, ten years, no. See, Am I against being, am I, am I for being harsh? No. I'm a compassionate person. But please, brothers, marry though are about to marry. Never over pamper children. Let them know discipline is part of love. Because most of our children will be born in millionaire families. You must discipline them. Don't let spoiled children come up and become a nuisance to society. Pray. They say, no, I, the church is hot. Please, daddy, can you give me the car to the jeep? No, son, you are sitting down here. If me, your father, the owner of the jeep, the jeep is sitting down, you must sit down and pray. Let's go back to our primary schools. I'm serious, I'm rounding up. Let's go back to our secondary schools. Gone are the days when teachers including Christian schools. I don't know what is Christian about the school if they don't pray. You have a Christian school and you openly said it's a Christian school and at the beginning of the class, they don't pray. What, what, is, what is the Christian about it? The teacher himself cannot pray. You never see a fasting program organized in the school. Nobody cares. While they are praying, the teacher who is a young guy somewhere who is not even born again. Wait and let Koinonia start her schools. Oh yes. Oh yes. Let Koinonia start her schools. And you will see. There's nothing like I'm busy who will supervise it. It's a mandate. Don't do that I'm busy man of God and allow the devil kill your ministry. Sit down. Open your eyes and see what is happening. This teacher's life is questionable. He's destroying the life of the student. Call him to the office. Sir, we love you and we don't mean to embarrass you, but we notice that um, it seems you have not been uh, a very good influence over our children. Could there be a problem? Would you need some counsel? Nobody should talk to me. I'm doing all that nonsense. I tell him, as you finish this rubbish, collect your last salary with the cashier, go out of this place and never return. Any good PTA, they should clap for you as the director of that school and say you are preserving standards. They laughed at Covenant University, laughed at Landmark University, laughed at Mountaintop University, but these universities today are bringing a standard that is almost getting to Cambridge and Harvard because they kept God. Don't throw God and think it will go well with you. We'll continue next week. Six precepts to keep 
and preserve God in a territory. Which one have you missed? Would it be prayer, warfare, and intercession? Could it be that you neglect the convergence of believers? You come to the house of God today, you come after one month, or you come to the house of God today, you come when all your arrears are paid, only to come and testify. Have you positioned yourself to be used by God for an open display of miracles? Almost every family located here has the hand of Satan roaming somewhere. What is it still doing there when you come from that family? Apostle, can you come and visit us? Try first. Try first. Don't get used to all this. I, I, love, I love his testimony. Right? Pastor Lawrence, I love his testimony. It's not all about, oh, Apostle prayed for me and I got a miracle. No, I came here. Apostle taught me. I carried that understanding back home. And I said, Daddy, I know that for 35 years, no door has opened in this family. But I came all the way from Zaria with an anointing. I'm using the opportunity of this strike. Can we pray and fast for just two days and let's watch what God does? And in two days, something that did not happen in 30 years happens. You have revealed Christ to that environment. First Kings 11. Let's quickly look at an interesting story again. First Kings chapter 11. Bible talks about an interesting man called Jeroboam. First Kings 11. Twenty-six to twenty-eight. You will have an encounter of a lifetime tonight, I tell you. Verse 26, are we there? It says, And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the Ephraimite of Zereda, Solomon's servant, whose, mother, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow woman, even he lifted up his hands against the king. Now listen, there's no time to tell us the whole story. But the Bible tells us of the son of this widow called Jeroboam. And he said he was Solomon's servant. He was a servant. But watch what happened, verse 24. It says, and this was the cause that lifted up his hands against the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches in the city of David, his father. Verse 28. It says, and the man, Jeroboam, was a what? A mighty man of valor as a result. And Solomon seeing the young man that he was what? That he was what? He didn't say that he was anointed. He didn't say that he was a Jew. He didn't say that he was a male. He said he was a mighty man of valor. Do you know what it means for you to be called a mighty man of valor in ancient times? The Bible talks about the mighty men of David. One who fought single-handedly, threw down 800 people and a sword cleaved to his hands. The Bible talked about David of the tribe of Benjamin. The Bible tells us that the Benjamites, Bible history tells us that the, the Benjamites were so, were so fine in, in throwing slings, they could diverge an arrow with a sling. So it wasn't just that the anointing came upon David to kill Goliath. The anointing came upon something he had. Are you getting what I'm saying? Here the Bible says that Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon discerning that he was a mighty man of valor. What did he do? The Bible says in verse 28. Seeing the young man that he was industrious, advantageous, made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Jason. Seeing that he was industrious. He said, no, 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 no. You can't be a, a servant just like the other people. You are so proficient beyond servanthood. And I lift you. You are the head of the house of Joseph. Diligence gives God room to bless you. Mastery shuts the mouth of critics. Mastery shuts the mouth of naysayers. You make the prophecy of your enemies a self-fulfilling prophecy when you waste your time arguing and defending yourself rather than sharpening your sword to gain mastery. 
Hallelujah. You must be proficient at your place of work, in ministry, in business. Pay the price. Don't run around looking for cheap success. Don't run around looking for quick money. Don't run around trying to claim what you are not. I've said it and I will keep saying it till it burns into you. Don't try to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. There are so many people who look successful. Like the fig tree that Jesus saw. But when he came, he found no fruit in it. I've made up my mind that in my lifetime, every area the Lord wants to use me, I will be like a sword that has been sharpened at its finest. Hallelujah. A man of God, God wants to bless you. But there is no grace, no revelation. No, the personal contributions. You go for a meeting, a major conference, and waste the time of the people talking nonsense. And at the end of it, they say, uh, thank you for coming. Here's your honorarium. May the Lord bless you. And they will never invite you again. Never. God opened doors. You close them by yourself. Let me tell you, both in the church and in the secular environment, the minimum standard is exceptional excellence. Minimum standard. Is God speaking to us? You're a hairstylist. Oh God, open the door for me. God is saying to wear. Make room for the blessing. Be proficient enough. Hallelujah. Please challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. There are many music ministers. You wrote a song. There is no standard to gauge the proficiency of the song. You to sing the song and hear what you wrote. Huh? And then, you see, the worst thing that can happen to you is to surround yourself with mediocres who are too ashamed to tell you the truth. You come on stage and sing and make a lot of blunders and when you step down, they say, Kai, Ken, ah, that song. I say, really? You, you see how you are deceiving yourself? We, our standards are very small. So we, we feel a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment too fast because our standards are small. You're a man of God. You gauge yourself around with people who don't pray and are not serious. You lay hands on somebody and she falls down and you say emoji. Emoji compared to what? The day you go for a meeting, they bring a blind person. You pretend not to see the person. Praise the Lord. Oh, I have an apostolic. You go for a crusade, you see them. And you know the way, I love the way crusades are. They line the sick people. They are desperate. They say, man of God, there's somebody on the wheelchair here. Say, ah, did I ask you to bring the person out? Mastery. I love Jesus. Don't just think the Holy Ghost came upon him alone. The Bible says at age 12. Is that in your Bible? At age 12, Jesus sat down and began to articulate the writings of the prophets. The Pentateuch. This guy began to, he, he began to bombard the scribes and the Pharisees. What sort of boy is this? Don't waste the anointing. The anointing does not fall on nothing. The Bible makes us to understand in the building of the tabernacle, the glory of God never came until the tabernacle was built to specification. The last peg had to be put before they saw the glory of God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Excellence. Excellence in dressing. Excellence in your singing. Excellence as a student. Excellence as a worker. Excellence as a whatever it is you're doing. When people are clapping for you, if you don't run away from that place, you will soon die. Because the people who are clapping are only clapping out their frustration. Right? In a class where there are 100 students, and you write an exam, for instance, if the best student gets 11 over 100, if you do a speech and prize, who will take the first prize? It will be said he took first. Correct? But what grade did he get? Help me. 
So he can move around saying I'm the best student compared to what standard. Then the day you step out and meet others who are not joking. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. Kabbalah katayama. A workman who needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Pay attention to diligence. Pay attention to diligence. Don't stop clapping for yourself when it's not time to clap for yourself. Hallelujah. Raise the bar. Thank God you are a local champion. In your community, you are the best. See the nations. If you don't make room for the nations, you will never be beyond the nations. That's why there are pastors that will never pastor more than 50 members. More than 100 members, more than 500 members, more than a thousand members because the capacity, they have not made room for the blessing. Is God speaking to us, please? Don't just get angry and be frowning at your boss and say, this man is so wicked. This guy just got a job. In two months, he's promoted him. Proficiency. Proficiency. closely tied to that I spoke about laziness oh by the way Proverbs 22 verse 29 says see thou a man diligent in his business it gives you an assurance it says you will not stand before mean men average people once you are diligent it will defy every other barrier and make sure you meet with the kings of that sphere of influence I've met with people that ordinary my level in life would never qualify me to see them. Not even by accident. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Laziness. Proverbs 10 verse 4. Many young people in Nigeria are lazy. Lazy. Mentally lazy. Spiritually lazy physically lazy we're in a hurry to show quick success we're in a hurry to show that things are working life is not like that the Lord put this in my heart to talk to us about it and I will Proverbs Proverbs what 10 verse 4 who is there Some of you are still at Exodus, Proverbs, Proverbs after Psalms. Proverbs 10 verse 4. It says, he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, a lazy person, no inertia. He becometh poor. The word poor there is not just financially poor. You become bankrupt in every area. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. I found a very good scripture for ministers. Romans 12 verse 11. Let's hurry up so we can have time. Romans 12 verse 11. Shiva la kura sibrani anabala. 12 verse 11. Are you there? Say amen. One to read. Not slothful in business fervent in spirit serving the Lord he said not slothful the word slothful there means laggy you are not, you are not giving life the kind of aggression it takes right he said not slothful in business diligent, fervent zealous in spirit serving the Lord so you want to serve the Lord you want to serve his body you must be competent Please hate average. Let me tell you something. As you are sitting down here, the number one thing that should happen to you this night is tell yourself the truth. I've tried, but compared to where God wants to take me, the journey is still far. It will help you to humble yourself. Whether they write Apostle Jakes, Bishop Jakes, right? It's an ugly scene. To see an incompetent person boasting is a very ugly scenario. My goal 
is that we'll have the brightest of the brightest and the best of the best. The head of, the head of um, technical is here. I went to pray for his office at the bio, bio what? Biotech, that biotech place. And when I went in, I looked at his office and I looked at everything. I said, wow. It's not about size. It's about content. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's about content. At least I know that there is a project that they are on now. Projects of, of hundreds of millions. Competence. When you become competent, let me tell you brothers and sisters. All of a sudden where you are coming from will never matter. Jeroboam, the Bible says his mother was a widow. Meaning she did not have the opportunity to do much. But competent. Please, there are many of us here, it is your competence that will wipe the tears of your parents. They didn't go to school. They done their best. Don't sit down in the average there and keep forcing your mother, your father, the poor people doing their best. Rise up and change your status. Don't just sing it as a song. Is God speaking to anyone here? I read the story of Joseph so that it will minister to us because many of us are young people. Joseph was 30 years 30 years and as a matter of fact out of that 30 years about 12 to 30 of that 30 years was spent as a slave what is your excuse you are a keyboardist you are the only one who claps for yourself when you play and you are angry and say oh lord open doors for me you see the, the problem is God does not want to disgrace his name are you getting me because you are an object of praise. Everything that leaves you reveals the glory of God. It's called doxazo, a display of his glory. You must be competent. Competent. I always do this. Mike, play something. Play, just play anything on the keyboard. And um, listen. What he just played is exactly what they are crying for in many churches and they will find him and not even ask what is it nobody will ask whatever and say come we are willing to pay you huh and you are there pay, playing the things with your fingers and say lord this church i already see my destiny no matter what you saw in your dream i guarantee you if you are not diligent you won't enter into it praise the lord you are a doctor. The first person you gave an injection had problem. Second person had problem. Third problem. Before you blame demons, we're going to there will be deliverance here shortly. But I told you that the biggest problem of Africa is blaming demons. You can't take demons to court, you can't arrest them. We we like the fact that they are invisible entities. We excuse our failures. Everything demons. You woke up by nine, I know it's a spirit that, that stopped me. Huh? I planned for five. What happened? You are to go for a job interview by nine. By 8.30, you are strolling around carelessly. As if it's your place. As if you are the director. You are, the CEO that will interview you was there by seven. You stroll around. You came late and said, in the name of Jesus, lift up your head. Oh, ye gates. See that? The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience, when your obedience, when your own part of the equation is complete. Say, I refuse to be average. Say it, I refuse to be average. At least I'm better than him now. You see, that's the demonic attitude that keeps people as failures. They look around and say, eh, thank God, I'm not good, but at least I'm better than this sister. Even you, you know I'm better than you. 
God wants to lift his body and it does not take too long but the greatest publicity is to remain in the secret place sharpen yourself become exceptional the Bible says and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance when John appeared with uncanny accuracy he knew that this was Jesus he said behold the lamb behold the lamb he didn't mistake Jesus for John the beloved he didn't mistake him because he asked all the questions in the secret place Gideon defeated the Midianites he stayed and asked the question and made sure he was ready look at David David looks at Goliath and while others are chickening out David comes he ran to him that's what competence does it gives you confidence when others are running away you say where is the challenge They were going to hang all the magicians in the days of Daniel. The king said, by tomorrow, if you don't tell me my dream and the interpretation, just know you are dead. And Joseph said, um, I mean, Daniel said, allow me. And the Bible says in the night, the secret, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And when he got up, he said, oh king, this and that and that. And he was promoted instantly. Listen, brothers and sisters, contend for mastery. Contend for mastery. Those of us who are at work, contend for mastery. Don't be a liability to your place of work and expect promotion. It's not fair. Contend for mastery. And people will look for you. They will beg you. There are people who are paid millions of dollars to speak for one hour. Dr. Miles Munro, one of my greatest mentors, died last year. He wrote about 54 books and about 49 or so of them were bestsellers. It wasn't just because he was anointed. He consulted for government. $10,000 per hour. Even if it's just to look at your face. Competence. Hallelujah. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. You build a house as if the ground is falling. Why should they invite you again? Right? They send you to go and buy something. You buy something substandard. You don't even know what is the real thing. Refuse incompetence. You trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room so that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you will be called blameless and pure. Children of the most high. And you will shine like the stars. As you hold forth the word of life. Be competent. Be competent. No room for laziness. Say amen. So you must gain mastery. Mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence. Once you have mastery in an area, it will attract significant people in that area. I receive phone calls and text messages and I'm amazed at certain people who call me. They do not even know that they are the people that I have desired to see myself. And they call me. Hello, sir. How are you? Ah. I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah! Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention. Sooner or later, your grace will be needed. The darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price. Because not everybody is ready to be competent. So when you become exceptional, forget about the criticism for now. With time, people will swallow their words and look for you. I assure you, the same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress. 
by the time his company knows dives, he will find you for sure. Is God speaking to anyone here? Whatever your hand findeth to do, that's what my Bible says. It said, do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional to deliver word in season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed and have been graced, I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. My very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity. God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it prepare. That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare. Prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side is leaving a job, another job is coming. A federal government job. We are going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active when it comes upon a refined gift. When God anoints your grace, when God anoints your ability, you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing. You are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts. When you refine your abilities. When you refine it, then you are ready for the anointing. Sharpen yourself. Sharpen yourself. And then you are ready for the anointing. The fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar. The fire does not just fall. The anointing falls when you are prepared, when you are ready, then you become relevant. 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 I refuse to be relegated and I refuse you and forbid you from being relegated. Not just because you are a Christian, but because you do not have what to offer. Hallelujah. My younger brother, very brilliant gentleman. When he graduated, a job was not forthcoming. And I looked at him. I told him, young man, just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. For one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, but he committed his best. He gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job. That they were paying him 5,000. I told him, no problem. Stay there. Just be serious. He became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they would know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in the University of Joss. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. When they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace and shut the door of the prison forever? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed 
that Jesus Christ, after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch and prepared himself, getting an exact blueprint of his assignment, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then, together, his diligence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says he went about doing good, became invincible, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He said, I have found David, my servant, Psalm 89 verse 20, downwards, and with my holy oil, have I anointed him? I had to find him. I found David since. But he had not done his work. Now I've found my servant. And with my holy oil, I've anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle, the architect of that construction, he was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship. And the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you. When God anoints your grace, he will command men to hear you. And no, even if you are living in a cave, you become a city that is set on a hill that cannot, cannot. You spend your time praying and studying the word and opening up yourself and making yourself available. Then that unction will come upon you. It comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of God upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit. He becomes undeniable, invincible. No matter what you say about that person, the world is too dark for the, that grace to be ignored. I show you a key. God wants you great. God wants you blessed. For many of us in this miracle service, this is the key to the next dimension. I don't just want us to say it is it's raining, raining, let it rain and so on and so forth. No. Hallelujah. Grace. And I salute so many people who left various places to come tonight because it is part of your, play your own part. And tonight grace will come upon you and it will distinguish you. Like Saul, you will go back and they will say, ah, is Saul also one of the prophets? When did you enter this dimension? Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. It's not magical. It's a formula. And God is calling us. Wipe the tears of your family. Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that, you must make up your mind, brothers and sisters, that something must be different about my life. Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service, I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent, by March, calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are, are placing demands on the grace, willing to pay any amount, job or no job. There are people who are not working, but they are getting the salary of CEOs because people will pay for your gift. Let me tell you, it says buy the truth. God put a price tag on the truth. And if you have the truth, men will buy the truth. They will pay you. And they will call it a privilege. Is God speaking to someone here? And don't say, I didn't go to school. Or I didn't have the opportunity. I cannot speak English. No, no, no. None of those things. Master whatever God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? master whatever he has given you and tonight an anointing comes on it and I send you like the foxes of Samson and you will step in and begin to do wonders the pride of every true leader is not that he becomes a superstar I've said it again and again that true leadership the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders not maintain followers Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you. But the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far, lift your voice and talk to your maker. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. 
this music ministry. Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence. Exceptional competence. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of being a mediocre. I'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty. I'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity. In this season of the rain, I'm challenging myself. Come on, pray, young and old. It's time for a new season. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Never will I be termed forgotten. But I will be called Pula. Pula. The land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business. Mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray. As a worker, I am the best staff. I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional. 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 I'm an ambassador. I represent the parliament of heaven. And I represent God at the highest level of excellence. Pray, Koinonia. As you cry upon him, he grants you grace. Lord, you want to change our stories in this season. We make room. We make room. We make room. We make room. We reject the spirit of laziness. Time and chance happen to them all. Opportunity and seasons come to them all. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray this prayer point. You're going to ask God for grace. Mention the areas where you need God to grant you grace to be competent. There are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence exceptional competence don't let any man preach you against competence incompetence will make you poor incompetence will make you angry incompetence will make you a failure incompetence will make you average I must stand out. I must stand out. In my generation, I must stand out. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I like you to pray. Pray for grace to be outstanding. Lift your voice. Grace to be outstanding. Forget about the pain of today. The Bible says for our light afflictions, which is what for a moment, walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Pray. While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. 
for the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. The closed door is subject to change. When you are competent, nations will celebrate you without bias. They will celebrate you. They will demand your grace. They will pay for it. the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials, sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. Because you know that you have, you have done your assignment. You will always be ashamed. You will always envy successful people. You will always hate them when you remain a mediocre. But when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, my time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart, inside and outside. No matter how far you are, pray. Hallelujah. Insist that you must be touched this night. Insist that something must change. It doesn't take time. It just takes one encounter. You came with a lot of challenges. Don't sit down and waste your time. Make sure you cry unto God. Tell the Lord exactly what you want tonight. Go ahead. Please speak to the Lord, especially for those standing outside. Make sure you talk to him. I feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear We see the rain of your love We feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear So let it rain Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I don't care what the issue is. Let your faith rise right now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I see sick people all around inside and outside and I see all kinds of people. But I want you to know tonight that the God of wonders is still in this place. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy life. your hands everyone hallelujah listen Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home. There will be massive deliverance right now. Massive deliverance. There are people who have come. There are families that have come from far and near. Hallelujah. And every challenge, every power of darkness. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Participate. Listen. We are going to shout that name. Please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula. There is an anointing with it. Because it's a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. You are going to shout that name. At the count of three. As you shout that name. There will be all kinds of deliverances. Many of you, you are standing in not just for yourself. But for your family members, all kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for. In the name of Jesus, I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil, every covenant, every spell at the count of three, let the fire of God separate those people right now. One, two, three. Shake it, shake it, shake it, those devils. I command those forces in the name of Jesus. I cast out those devils. Bring them out. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. The fire is falling on witchcraft outside. The fire is falling. Every power that is not of God. I send the rod of judgment. Every power that is not of God, everyone standing upon this ground, I come with an apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus. Satan, let God's people go. There's no hiding place for the power of God is everywhere. There is no hiding place, not for witchcraft. There is no hiding place. I command judgment. Let the angels of the living God move across this congregation and break chains. Hallelujah. I see a lot of chains. Lift your hands again. I see chains. So many chains. Break. Chains. Listen, 
some of you this change has lasted for years and decades i don't care how long it has been as you shout that name again i see many people outside you will know the chain has broken that embargo over your family you will know it when it happens because i hear sounds of chains at the count of three shout that name again with all your might and i command that as they shout may those chains break one two three chains of stagnation chains. Hear me, listen. Listen. I guarantee you, not one person standing on this ground will go back with the chains holding you. I'm speaking to the powers. They know the voice of God. This is the season of the rain. This is the season of the rain. And in the name of Jesus, now over families, any family under the sound of my voice, you have suffered mysteriously. I come in the name of the Lord whose I am and I command judgment upon the powers of darkness. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Right families, Hallelujah. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end, annihilate. It says, Son of man, what seest thou? Zechariah 1 18. It says, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, and against Jerusalem. So that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. And they will terrorize those horns. We have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness. They must let you go. After nine plagues, Pharaoh refused to let them go. He said, yet will I send one more plague upon Pharaoh and Egypt. And after that, he will let you go. Jesus paid the price in full completely. There is no reason why the devil should tie you down. When he was on the cross, he said it is finished. And we are here to enforce that which, that fatigue. In the name of Jesus, for those in front here, they represent families. I don't care what kinds of spirits or entities. At the count of three, you will let God's people go and release their families no matter how long the blood of jesus annihilates the legal hold you have i don't care what covenant you have in the name of jesus therefore i speak to every foul spirit 
that at the count of three you let them go never to return right now in the name of jesus one two three go 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 out you go out you go out you go never to return out you go by the ministry of the blood by the ministry of the blood i cost you by the ministry of the blood release the families release their finances release their destinies go now go now i compel you by the blood of jesus of captivity that blood opens that gate in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah I declare every family under bondage free I don't care how long the doors have been closed we open it now you will begin to experience unlimited breakthroughs. Hallelujah. Who is Stephanie? Stephanie. I hear a name Stephanie. You are wearing a like orange veil. Do we have somebody like that? Is it an orange veil or something? Stephanie. Yeah. Bring that woman. That lady or that woman, whoever. Just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity. Out! Now! Leave her alone. She will rise up completely healed. Stephanie, Stephanie. I still hear the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish fast. So I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like, is it four children? Or something? A family. Do we have someone like that? Please, if, if it's yours. If it's your case or it looks like your own, just signify and let us know. If there is none, we can move forward. Because this is what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing a family. It's like four children. They are here. They came here. Shut up. Is it you? You are the one. Where are the people? Where are your children? Come. Why are you sitting back? Come. Do you know that there is a call of God upon the family? Not just your mother, but upon the family. And it's a prophetic call. It's a prophetic call. Right? It's not only your mother. I didn't, I'm, I'm, I don't know you people. But the hand of God is going to come upon you. It's a mighty anointing of the spirit. It will come upon you. Are you part of the family? Huh? You are related. You are what? You are on your own. Okay, please, until I call you, but come, come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? the Lord is going to lift you why am I seeing a ring in your hand I'm not seeing a physical ring but it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring your wedding bells are ringing are you married huh this is what I'm <laughs> we don't feel embarrassed we are a family marriage is not a bad thing Abi mommy is it a bad thing it's not a bad thing because there is nobody 
and you are wondering, this is what you are thinking in your heart, where is the person? Listen, he said, we see the fire. We see the fire. We see the wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. The same word that comes. Listen, listen, my dear, you don't know me. I'm not a herbalist. Are you getting my point? When the Lord brings a word, he will make it happen. My brother, this year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What does, what, what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. This one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? It's a strange opportunity. If you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother, I'm telling you, she's not fake. I'm saying it now. Because they have been talking about this woman. She sees and people have been saying she's fake. I'm saying if this woman is fake, she will not enter this place. I guarantee you. Except I'm not a man of God. Please, she's not fake. What she needs is, is the, an, an accurate alignment through the word of God. So that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened. She has a lot of prophetic insight. But the word level is very low. So there is dwindling. That stability in the spirit is not there. That's all. This mama is not fake. Because I'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing. Very powerfully. Come, madam, come. Let's pray to the king. You have taken all the glory. You have taken Hold hands, both of you. I show you a mystery. Madila Katabarata. Jembra Mato Zatali Kaparando Skolapaya. Mambro no Supaya. One will chase a thousand, but two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces right now happening between both of you. It's a drinking together, it's a heavy anointing that is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing drink of that wine right now in the name of Jesus Christ don't be afraid to help her you won't be with her forever but the Lord is going to lift you in due season and you will begin to see in a strange way may the Lord bless you may he anoint you in the name of Jesus Christ I break the embargo of darkness over the family come you are a great lady, but the devil wants to oppress your life. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Mm, for he is here. Light shines in the darkness. You must release her. Let her go. Now. I'm seeing an old woman's face. But in the name of Jesus, I declare, you step into strange dimensions of grace. I command deliverance to you right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's all right. I bless this family. The Lord changes your story. You will return with dramatic testimonies in Jesus' name. Newi. I'm hearing a name of a place. There is there's Newi. I know it's an evil place, right? There is there is a there is somebody at, I think at a lady or a guy or somebody from that place. Newi. Who is that? Please, if it's your case, whether you are outside, just make your way so that you don't waste our time. Please, there are so many other people. Come, mama. She's your mother. What's wrong with her? Is this working? Please help us. She's having a problem with her legs. She's having problem with her legs. knee problems. Her legs. Oh. Her legs. Her Arthritis. You don't know. Yeah. You love God. Asleep. Very well. Very well. Yeah? Very well. Well enough to marry a man of God? Yes. Because that's your husband. He's a man of God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how, madam. <laughs> See mommy laughing. <laughs> mommy, come. What is wrong with her leg, please? Let's, let's not... Well, it has been disturbing her for some time now. How long? Let's... Up to two years now. I feel a swoon in my waist by my left leg, fish ground. I used to feel serious pain. Don't, don't, don't cry, it's okay. 
Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. Look at me. Just look at me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. Go. Now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama. You believe Jesus? I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Look. Praise the Lord. I came to this program today. I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. My come on, give Jesus. God. Praise God. I'm I'm to, to, pray. to break every chain. Break every chain. Let's go. Come. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Yes. Because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You, are, you know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a lie? <laughs> they just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things. They just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, truly, truly, the grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request. Not for money. Many of you will ask for money. I will give me money sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. Yes, and I have since graduate. I thank God for what God has been doing in my life. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. 11 children in the name of Jesus Christ they will serve the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ they will serve the Lord I bless this family let doors of prosperity be open let doors of advancement be open in the name of Jesus God bless you celebrate Jesus for mama's miracle rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony hallelujah Who brought this person? Help us now. Where are the people? Huh? I'm the one. It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. Yes, he problem. Is what happened to him? It's okay. okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? Uh, let me talk. What happened to you? Uh, I fell sick last year October when they took me to the hospital. Oh, when was so many examinations. And they say it's cancer. And when they refer me to Shika here. They said you have cancer. Yes. Sir. So right now you have cancer. Yes, sir. So they've left you to die. Yes, sir. Cut off the, of your legs. Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did he stop walking? Last month. You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit right now you feel fire going through your body I curse that spirit upon these legs father in the name of Jesus Christ I release the power of God I command that spirit leave him right now move your legs start moving your legs try to move it in the name of Jesus Christ are you feeling the legs do you feel the legs now I release strength to these legs right now. 
I release strength to these legs in the name of Jesus. I release strength to these legs right now. Exercise the legs and let him start moving it. Go ahead. The cry in your family comes to an end by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord visits you and brings to an end. He brings to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please call this, ma this madam. Come, he will answer you. Come. Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. He's visiting you in a strange way. Bringing breakthroughs to you. Refining the fire. And causing the hand of wickedness over your family. That embargo is lifted over your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come ma. Don't worry, God is touching everybody. Just connect to what he's doing. Mommy, look at me. Please don't cry. Look at me. Just look at me. I want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end. I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. No, come. Is that all there is to the story? When I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at an angel walking through this hole. This is what I'm looking at an angel. The Lord wants me to talk to somebody. That person will come under the power of God right now. When that happens, please let me have that person. You have taken all the voices. You have taken all lamentations. You have taken all the praise. You have made them yours. Please bring out. I give you, I give you, I give you the highest praise. A fire that ignites you and sets you free. I command in the name of Jesus that influence of darkness leaves you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, please. All those who came here specifically for healing miracles, find your way to the front right now. Worship team, give us a powerful session of worship as we pray. Please, don't make it rowdy, inside and outside. Aside from the, the family that I minister to, if you came with a sick person, please come and line up here quickly. Let's save time. Expect the power of God to touch you. Please. You see what the Lord is doing. And all of us who are standing, if there is a loved one or somebody you know, as you are standing, connect to them. Please, don't lose connection with this service. Some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you. It will be a quick walk. Pastor Jackson, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do. Especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen. All of you standing. 
I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you the price has been paid. And so as we pray, everyone I'd like you to connect because some of you shortly, you will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing. So you must focus. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Elijah said, if you can see me, don't, don't be distracted, please. Hallelujah. Please pass your request, ushers. Let's hurry up, please. Get them to the aisle. Just pass it to the last person. The last person by the side, please. Help the ushers inside and outside. It's not a ritual. There is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place. Please. Begin to pray in tongues as you do that, please. Everywhere. Begin to pray in tongues. All those connecting with us online, it's time for them to connect now so that we can... Hallelujah. We're not trying to build doctrines out of no no I'm I'm one person that fights tradition, especially where the Spirit of God is not there. But this was an instruction God gave according to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah carried the threat letter and brought it to the altar and laid it there before God. Hallelujah. Please, very quickly, inside and outside. If others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out, just you can just keep it and connect by faith. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. It says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Make it known. Don't hide it. Make it known. Begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now. Please pray. Hearing is our Father glorified when you bear much fruit. Some of you, the request you wrote here, only God can grant it. That's why we don't read it. We just pray. Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here. No matter how long. Let's do it very quickly. I have seen... God do strange things strange things in the lives of people we have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles please I want you to know the person you are praying to I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman it's not to an idol you are not praying to the president of this nation the king of kings is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am. I am Hallelujah. Myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels. There are some of you, as we are praying on it, instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Hey. Father, hear the prayers of your people. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let there be all kinds, all kinds of miracles. I agree with my brother, all kinds of miracles, supernatural jobs, supernatural liftings. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you that answer prayer with all flesh Blessed Lord, let every cry, every need, Lord, every pain, Lord, let things that look impossible by men, we pray for a change in the name of Jesus. We ask for the hand of God to come mighty, Lord, upon families. Let there be testimonies, Lord, unfolding testimonies. We pray for the hand of God, Lord, to open doors that have been closed. Hear that, though. We ask for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord. The blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs, amazing, blessed jobs, Lord. Miracles, miracles, Lord. Healings of families, Lord. We pray that, Lord, contracts that have been overdue, Lord, we pray for sudden calls. Calls, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, the tears of your people, Lord, the needs of your people. In the name of Jesus, we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus. My Father, as we lay these prayer points before you, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. We ask that doors be opened. Let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus. Thank you because God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one, but the word of God, Kabbalah, he said is the discerner of the thoughts and the intent. No matter where you are, one word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation. Please, I want you to believe. Everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed. There is no room for entertainment. We fear God and will not gather you to waste your time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lift your hands. As your level changes, lift your hands. Something will happen to you. Please, I want you to receive as I pray. Shout amen from the depth of your heart. Amen means let it be so. It's an act of faith. Hallelujah. I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family. I say it again. The era of mourning by prophecy. Let mourning end in your life and in your family. Hallelujah. Hear me. Every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level. By the weapon of the prophetic. In the name of the Lord Jesus. 
I command those limitations broken. Human limitations, demonic limitations, I command them broken now. I command them broken now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every dimension you should have entered by now that you have not entered by the mystery of restoration. In the name of Jesus, between now and the next miracle service, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Hallelujah. I pray for every student here. Listen, this proverb will no longer be used in your life. Listen. That proverb that makes God lose if he's not alive in your academics. In the name that is above all names. We send angels to every department. Of every campus represented here. We send angels to every faculty. May they tear down. May they uproot. Every trace of wickedness. May they tear down. May they uproot. In the name of Jesus. Let missing scripts be found. Let students that have been victimized be restored in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. There are many people you want to take steps but fear is keeping you down. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. I cause fear from your life now. I cause fear from your life now. I cause fear. I cause fear, I cause fear in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray for you. There are many who have been praying. Lord, reveal to me the purpose of my existence. There are people who have been crying. I don't want to waste my time in destiny. I pray for you. That through a night vision, mysterious prophetic encounters, may your exact assignment be revealed. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are people praying right now. All you, are, you have come here for is the direction for the next level. You just came to get direction. I prophesy to you. The Bible says, and ye shall hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. I command between now and next week, let there be accurate direction. Accurate direction. In the name of Jesus. I pray for you. There are people here. Whenever they want to favor you. People change their minds. For reasons you do not understand. I pray. In the name of Jesus. That every planting that is not of God. That is making your helpers reject you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I command them broken now. I command them broken now. Hallelujah. By the power of prophecy, I connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension. Please take seriously what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus, I connect you. I connect you. Business helpers, ministry helpers, academic helpers, marital helpers, receive the ministry in the name of Jesus. Prophecy is like rain. Your job is to receive it. Once you receive it, it starts acting immediately in your life. Hallelujah. 
I pray in the name of Jesus Christ over your health that spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions the price has been paid and therefore by the blood I break you free from any covenant of infirmity I break you free from I command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent may you be free once and forever hallelujah I challenge embargo of hardship over people and families there are families that love God but it's like hardship will never leave them in the name of Jesus we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service return with breakthrough testimonies return with breakthrough testimonies you may not know how it will happen but may my God go before you and shock you hallelujah I pray for your finances in the name of Jesus there are many who are giving you are tithing you are faithful but it just looks like when things are about to happen there are limitations in the name of the Lord Jesus I declare that beginning from next month I invoke the mystery of divine supply the same way hear me the same way a raven the bible does not tell us where it came from but it brought bread for the prophet i command mysteriously may your gates be open now to receive the forces of the gentiles i pray for everyone called doll in this place you understand but something happens to your mind that 10 times better anointing that distinguishes people receive it in the name of Jesus I sense an anointing one more time I pray that prayer whatever stops you from understanding the Bible says and he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures I pray for you. May understanding be granted unto you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Favor, Magaba Dadala, the one factor that separates men, that favor in a heavy dimension, may it mantle you from now. May favor mantle you from now. In the name of Jesus, financial favor, marital favor, academic favor, favor in your job, favor in ministry. Hallelujah. Everyone who is confused about life, any aspect of life, I bring that confusion to an end now. I pray for all those who came here specifically trusting God for the fruit of the womb in fact I pray for you listen not just physical barrenness any area of your life this is the year of the rain and when rain falls barrenness stops therefore I command be fruitful in the name of Jesus be fruitful multiply subdue and have dominion in the name of Jesus I command everything called dead in your life and your family I don't care for how long it has died your health, your business, your life in the name of the Lord Jesus I command resurrection right now in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you. 
there are people who desire God you desire an encounter that's what you need you desire an encounter I pray for you may the angel of the Lord's presence visit you you may not understand what I'm saying may the angel of the Lord's presence visit you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for your gift your ability your skill whatever you are you that brings bread help her please I pray for you the works of your hands because you are determined to be diligent you will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer I put an anointing on your skill I put an anointing I put an anointing on your ability I put an anointing on your gift on your work on your skill may it begin to produce in a supernatural dimension hallelujah now lift your hands I just want to do an impartation there are people who have come from different places please be sensitive we are out of time we will soon round up but it's time to receive something listen listen I told you there will be many impartations hear me the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference are you hearing what I'm saying no matter what you are doing when the grace is not there you will struggle forever please hear me especially in ministry if you are a minister of the gospel in this place help that please it's time for you to catch this thing for real it's yours for the taking listen I want to pray as I stretch my hands and pray inside and outside wherever you are you must not be in ministry like fivefold whatever area many of you will begin to have dreams encounters listen many of you will step into healing graces there's no time to move one by one but i'm going it's one of the major assignments god gave me tonight please believe it you will argue it at your own detriment there is a cheap route the help of god is here to lift you the help of god is here to take you lift your hands everybody father i pray that in the next two minutes let there be from the front to the back outside let there be strange impartations at the count of three one two three let the wind blow right now receive it prophetic graces apostolic graces shake it take it take it a protosia dreams visions encounters dreams visions encounters the word of knowledge gifts of the spirit let there be distributions right now right now right now the gift of wisdom the word of knowledge the working of miracles the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues the gift of prophecy gifts of healing healing mantles receive it receive it leadership anointings leadership anointings leadership anointings i impart it leadership anointings utterance 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 i release it to you utterance in the name of jesus to communicate the things of the spirit utterance receive it utterance i i release upon you insight into scriptures insight into the mysteries of the kingdom i grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit the mysteries of dominion the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of impact hallelujah
the final prayer I want to pray for you is honor. Many of you don't know what honor is. Honor is not the same thing as blessings. You can be blessed but not honorable. It says, and Jabez was more honorable. Honor. That fragrance that compels loyalty. That fragrance. Zamatic alive. Lord, everyone under the sound of my voice, inside and outside, may this grace that, that will bring honor to a man beyond your age, beyond your level, receive it now in the name of Jesus. I release it from the depths of my heart. Receive it in the name of Jesus. From today, everywhere you go, may honor follow you. And I declare these hands that are lifted like Aaron, like Joshua, lifted up the hands of his servant Moses, I command, may those hands never go down. May the Lord cut off from your life everything that will bring your hands down. And I pray for marriages supernaturally. May God connect people supernaturally in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As it is happening to you, let it happen to every one of your family members, no matter where they are. I prophesy as it is happening to you, let it happen to every one of your family members. Hallelujah. Now very quickly, you are here. You've never given your heart to the Lord. Please hear me. Please keep standing, everybody. No moving around. Let's honor them. Just in one minute. You're here inside and outside. You have never made a decision for Jesus Christ. Or at one time, you have made a decision for Jesus. But you found yourself dwindling. You have seen the hand of God. And Jesus is calling you back home. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Don't let any man cajole you. Win the war in your heart today. For the sake of your destiny. Wherever you are, Please start running from your seat inside and outside and come out here. I want to lead you personally to Christ and pray for you. Go ahead. Are there people like that? Go ahead. Don't look at any neighbor. Don't look at anyone. Wherever you are, inside or outside. Don't pretend it. Jesus is calling you very quickly. Very quickly. Where are those who are giving their lives to Jesus? Inside or outside? Make your way to the front. Don't be ashamed. Please appreciate them coming on as they come. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. No matter how far, rush and make your way. Young and old. God bless you. Keep coming. It's time to make it right. Don't play games with destiny. Jesus is calling you. Come and surrender everything. Totally and consciously. Totally and consciously. Please make way for them. Don't stop them. Make way for them. Come to Jesus. Hallelujah. I salute and congratulate every one of you for coming out. Hallelujah. The prayer you are praying is not reciting a poem. I want you to pray from the depths of your heart. Lift your right hand and say after me passionately and truly say Lord Jesus I love you and I believe in you I believe you died for me you rose again for me I surrender completely to you take charge of my life from today and forever I denounce sin I denounce Satan and I receive eternal life into my spirit Keep your hands lifted. Father, receive these ones. Change them. Transform their lives radically. I cause the power of sin from your life and I release grace upon you to experience that which Christ has done for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, everything that keeps drawing you to sin, I cause it right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for this great decision. Please follow the ushers, the gentlemen with the jerseys. They will have your details and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here,
kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching